Chair Lane? Here. Commissioner Tonelli? Here. Commissioner Sokolov? Here. Commissioner Lerner? Here. Commissioner Lamb is excused. regarding how the way that the sidewall height definition can perhaps create an inequitability in the application okay. as it relates to attic spaces for a modern type of architecture versus more um, traditional type of architecture. So we can clarify the two distinct um, topics of landscaping and sidewall height definition as it relates to attic spaces. That would be great. Because okay. I want to know that for the minutes I understand what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. The request before you tonight is for a special structures permit for a garage with a reduced front yard setback at 97 Michaels Way. The applicant is proposing to locate a garage at the front line of the existing main residence, 67 feet from the front property line. The lot is located at the end of a cul-de-sac on Michaels Way. It's considered a flag lot because it does not meet the conventional requirements for lot frontage in the town's municipal code. The lot's frontage the lot's only frontage is an approximately 50-foot curved portion located along Michael's Way. The garage would be sufficiently screened from the main residence, um, and there's existing landscape screening in place. The applicant would also submit additional landscape screening plan to the satisfaction of our town arborists 
to ensure that the structure will be minimally visible from neighboring properties in the public right-of-way. The garage is compatible with existing neighborhood patterns and character as a similar special structures permit was issued to a neighboring property. The applicant considered locating the structure on other portions of the lot, but due to locations of exi existing structures, such as an existing garage, flat work, a heritage tree, and a pool, this location makes the most sense in terms of design. No heritage trees are proposed to be removed as a part of this project. Public notices were sent out to all neighbors within a 500 foot radius of the property, and staff has received no questions or public comments regarding this hearing. The garage would meet all other applicable zoning provisions for an accessory structure in the R1A zone. With all of that said, staff is able to recommend approval for the special structures permit. I'm more than happy to answer any questions, and we have representatives of the project team as well as um, the residents here. Okay, great. All right, any questions of staff before we go to the public comments? All right, then I'll go with Nikki. And I'll go ahead then and have uh, the public comments. So, is, there, is the applicant here? Yes. All right, well, you, you can speak or one of your designates. Well, this is the architect who designed the Chris Kummer who uh, designed the garage. And My name is Chris Coomer, and uh, Keith and for working for Keith and Betsy here. You know, it's a pretty simple project, but I did want to point out one simple thing about the layout, and that's it can be brought up on the screen here. Computer has died. Computer died. Okay. Oh, we have a site but it's a, a very simple right, note that in locating the garage, the special structures permit would allow us to bring it up to the front setback. And that would maximize the usable yard. Okay. So that would have been sort of the way to maximize the backyard. Okay. But we tried to be sensitive in the design and we pushed it back from that line to line up with the house. So it's soft looking from the street at a little bit of a detriment to the yard, but I think that was the appropriate move. So we think that'll look nice and hopefully you do too. <coughs> Any questions? We have a small version of that. Any questions? All right. Go ahead. Bring the presentation, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the visuals were fantastic. <laughs> Keith Wallenberg, the property owner. Uh, the adjacent neighbor has a similar structure with the garage back in the same corner uh, lined with the, the front of their house. And he submitted a, a letter to the Planning Commission. I don't know if you have a copy. If you don't, I'll make sure it gets in the record. But uh, saying that he has no problems with it. And in fact, you know, the two garages would be facing each other 127 feet apart and the existing screening is such that you can't see either one from the other. So there's really not much of an issue as far as he's concerned. The neighbor on the other side is David Wallenberg at 85 Michaels and he's here in support of the right. idea as well. I think it was very well presented in our packet with neighbors' input. They've all been consulted, and uh, uh, the architect did a great job of, of describing everything. There's a number of trees involved, none of which are heritage trees, but the uh, actions that are necessary to preserve them, when the driveway is put in, for example, are all well delineated in our packet, and uh, I, I think it meets, answers all my questions. for me because um, it seems that it comes to fruition primarily because it's a special structures permit. I mean, no, for no reason other than 
than that. That's correct. Is that correct? Yes. With, for a reduced setback right. issued right. through the special structure yeah. process. I, I think great measures were taken to um, make sure this was a pristine proposal, and it seems to me to be. Yeah, ditto. And I uh, appreciate the uh, effort to uh, recite the garage and, and the reasons you del delineated, <coughs> delineated for the alternate uh, sites uh, to be uh, not considered. Uh, that was uh, important for me to see that you've done that and, um, and that there are legitimate reasons for having to put the garage where it is and, uh, and the flag lot consideration as well. But um, in your efforts to uh, add additional screening, uh, appreciate the effort that you've gone through to kind of make this work. by starting the memorandum that was posted on the website was incorrect. The correct version was emailed to all planning commissioners. There should be a hard copy at each of your dice as well as there's copies at, um, for the public. So not substantive changes, but there is additional detail in this version. So with that said, um, an overview of what staff is presenting and asking of the commission tonight. Um, a formal letter of request has been received by the town from the property owner at 136 Ensignal Avenue, requesting that the town study um, potential revisions to the municipal code, specifically regarding our landscape screening ordinance, to add in consideration for the protection of landscape screening and the impact that it may have on adjacent properties' right to access sunlight. Um, specifically, specific examples given in the letter of request had to do with the inability to plant certain um, vegetative species and or do gardening as a result of neighbors screening that was required under our landscape screening ordinance that over years grew to a certain height and width that blocked sunlight in specific areas of those neighboring homes. Um, Currently, our landscape screening ordinance does not require consideration of a tree's 
future impact it may have on sunlight access to adjacent properties. What our landscape screening ordinance does now is to provide for the maintenance of an individual property's uh, privacy of homes in the neighborhood uh, to a reasonable degree by requiring certain species types and or quantities that would effectively implement that purpose. Um, and as you've read through the memorandum, uh, the topic of sunlight access is one that um, this particular property owner feels warrants further evaluation by the town. Um, there were some photographs that were submitted also as part of the request mm -hmm. to help illustrate um, his, his request. Um, in conference with the town arborist, this letter of request in front of you, formal letter of request, um, has also been coupled with a few informal verbal I don't want to call it complaints, but uh, the issue is brought up, has been brought up verbally, but in a more informal basis to our town arborist over the course of a few years. So, um, you know, the example given by our arborist is a redwood tree. A redwood tree can provide very good screening, aesthetic screening between two properties. They also grow quite large, um, quite quickly. So over a few years, you know, what could help be an aesthetic barrier could also effectively create a sunlight barrier as well to that shared property. Um, staff has preliminarily looked into the issue, but bringing it forward to the Planning Commission for further discussion to see if there is consensus for more detailed evaluation to go in to potentially consider revisions to the ordinance what that would mean, um, maybe taking a <clears throat> comparison and see what other jurisdictions are doing. There are other ordinances or other regulations and jurisdictions that have to do with sunlight access, maybe not necessarily as it pertains to landscape screening um, that I know off the top of my head, but more to do with building mass. Mm -hmm. So something that we would need to further research in order to come back with more informed information for you. If you feel that this topic is, is one of further consideration. So we do have Sally here, um, town arborist, to answer any questions you may have on the specific conversations that she may have had with this particular property owner and other property owners who have brought up the issue. Um, and ultimately what we're asking for is direction if you'd like us as staff to further evaluate the topic. Um, we are known as a tree city. And trees get very tall. We love our trees. And while I don't doubt that there are certain lots that are affected by a neighbor's trees or large bushes or whatever it may be, uh, our lot sizes are rather large, running at least an acre or more. And I myself have eight redwood trees in our front yard, but there's a very clear area for lawn and home, as many others do. So <clears throat> for us to consider restricting the planting of trees seems contrary to what our town is all about. Mm -hmm. And I think it's prudent when you consider your landscaping as a new homeowner to consider the effect on neighbors. But I suspect it's a minority of cases that <laughs> would be affected by that uh, decision. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on it. I agree with Nancy. I, I tend not to like things that limit personal choice. Um, and I, I'm wondering, Sally, how, how often do you see um, property owners choose redwoods for screening purposes, <coughs> specifically for that reason? I mean, in the couple years I've been here, uh, maybe 10 times people have ch chosen it, mm -hmm. so it's not that popular anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, the people that have complained to me, I'm going to say complain, <laughs> um, about not being able to use their pool or garden. Um, they do really, they have larger mature redwoods that have already grown. So we can't really do anything about that at this point anyway. I can, I don't really give recommendations when people put their landscape screening plan to me. Um, I mean, I can, I could bring up the bring up the idea of oh this have you this could affect your neighbor have you considered this, mm -hmm. uh, but 
I can't really tell them what they can and cannot plant as long as it screens it within five years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I think it's difficult to quantify, you know, with, with screening and height restrictions or height uh, parameters that they're easy to, to kind of uh, judge and see what's there as far as screening is concerned. Um, when it comes to lot size, I think Ensenal, don't they have smaller lots over on Ensenal? Some. Uh, hold it, maybe not. Some, I'm thinking of the Cena section is what I'm thinking of. Maybe not on Ensenal. But I know it's more of an issue on smaller lots. Right. I mean, on this side of town, there's some quarter right. acre, one third lots right. um, where the shade is, is uh, more impactful as opposed to the acre lots where you do have some space beyond the, the, the shade of the tree to have a clear view. So I think that is consideration, but how do you evaluate, uh, how, do you, how do you quantify this? It, it would be my initial question mm -hmm. as to what space would there be for to get enough sunlight to grow something? And what if they're like, well, I wanna grow something over here and that's getting shade. I mean, it's just, it's so subjective. Right really, really difficult to kind of direct. You know, my whole thing is the definition of property, um, and it's more basic than the tree. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm going to go out and get a plane fly over my airspace, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I call them and I say, you know, stop driving, stop flying planes through my atrium. Uh, so I, I have this vision of this place that is, you know, within the realm of my thing. So we, we had a recent uh, uh, neighbor move in, and, and if our trees were Sorry, you want to give 
doesn't seem as if it, this issue is getting um, presented to staff on a frequent enough yeah. basis that staff would be recommending further evaluation of it. There is a formal request in front of us, so we do want to okay. look yeah. at that. I think on the um, occasions I do g have had comments, I've told them to write a letter or talk to city council or the planning commission, and and so we've only received one letter in all that time. So. Yeah. Well, I think I, I think there's a legitimate element of it that has to do with a new uh, a new property. So in this one in this one picture, we'll be a lot of those trees will be along the tree, and I actually went when I went there, I went that a lot of trees are going to get all big and dense and they're going to be tall. So that could be something for us to consider in terms of recommendation we make for new developments, mm -hmm. right? So I can see a new development not not being uh, not being necessarily uh, reinforced to have this sort of. That Those are right. Italian sites. Yeah. They're just they're big skinny things. Things. They're not going to create a wall, are they? Well, I think they're wall. big and fat. Uh, mm -hmm. and I don't around. think so. When I see them, they're just. Really? Yeah. I think they'd be tall enough to oh, actually. Like this. I, I, I think they'd get like this. Yeah, but how much? But that's just a big, tall, skinny thing. It's like a telephone pole. Yeah, but it, it gets like 10 feet wide. They get, they get wide. Really? Yeah, they get that tall. They get wide and wide. Mm -hmm. Oh, they probably get wide. Yeah. But I mean, that's a big building. Right? Yeah. Also, a lot right? of uh, Monterey pines have been planted as perimeter, around perimeters of properties, and those are all dying out. So uh, it will create less shade. So that's yeah. good. <laughs> well, so it, it's something for us to consider in terms of the recommendations on the yeah. I can see it being something that we yeah. have to work with, right? But I don't see anything in terms of the requirement to change to this code. No, I don't see it. All right, so do you need a motion or what do you need on this? Um, direction would be good if you'd like further evaluation, or it sounds like I'm hearing um, not, so that we can report such to city manager's office. We can, right. can report back. We've discussed it pretty thoroughly and expressed our mm -hmm. opinion each mm -hmm. of us, so. Mm -hmm. I think at this point what we're saying is that, yeah, yeah, the I combination of uh, we don't think that we don't think it's an issue that needs to be uh, addressed with our city code at this time, um, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to monitor it across the community to see if it becomes an issue for whatever. But mm -hmm. definitely, we want to always consider a change uh, or, or addressing anything that was safety related, or um, or, uh, or consider this uh, as a, something to think about in terms of recommendations to new development. Civic Center um, Advisory Committee, we probably have a month or two left um, with our duties uh, before the uh, the council um, takes everything and decides whether to approve or not approve. In our last meeting, we kind of went over uh, revising the landscape plan um, and uh, considered some signage. Um, we considered uh, the entryway to the uh, library here, uh, the fountain at the library deck. We just did a lot of detailing things that we went over with the landscape plan that we just kind of tweaked and uh, before we send it off to the council. We have a special meeting this coming up uh, Wednesday uh, in advance of our regular meeting, which is the following Monday. And Wednesday, we're, I just got this email this afternoon, we're scheduled to be doing, um, going over a, a, a history of the, of the project and looking at some financing options because I think council just voted uh, elected not to pursue Measure L, which was a smart move in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so now they're looking at the, the different financing options outside of uh, the donations that have been coming in with Average and Net. So, uh, but our duties as the advisory committee are coming to a close within the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I have some pictures of some of the landscape if you guys would like to see any of them. Uh, we have one of our signage too, uh, this first one, there's a sign in front of the Fair Oaks, uh, front of the building on Fair Oaks that's kind of a low level stucco or uh, wall with uh, letters. Yeah, it's all too A lot of shade, won't be able to grow anything. Um, 
as opposed to say a more uh, kind of rural looking wooden sign. Yes. Uh, we were looking at the wooden signs that, yeah. that are kind of keeping that with the. Uh, um, and when we talked about the front of the library, you see the, the building we're in here off to the right, which we'll call the historical town center, uh, the fountain, and then the new entrance to the library on the left. seven here for the tree committee which is Commissioner Pichelli, Commissioner Sokolov and two members of the um, tree committee themselves and Sally of course um, will be presenting a completely clean revised version of the tree preservation and specification guideline document there'll probably be some changes to the actual municipal code ordinances just so that things are internally consistent so to answer your question I would imagine one to two more meetings yeah. after our February meeting. Okay. I think we've made good progress on it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The meetings have been quite productive, very 